Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Amigos, the podcast about everything Amiga. Amigos is a proud member of the Throwback Network, your home for quality retro podcasts. And now, here are your hosts, Aaron Dowdy and John Bodovkar Schaller. All right. Sounds good. Sound good? All right. Before we do, though, we got some feedback from last week. Oh, okay. good. Um, so, uh, the first uh, piece of feedback comes in from Richard Oos. And he says, you guys, yeah. he says, you guys seem like the two nicest guys on the net and put out a great podcast to boot. Keep up the good work. So, thank you, Richard. We appreciate it. The two nicest guys on the net. I, I guarantee you we are the two nicest guys on the net, without question. That's, I, I, I've never been called nice before. So that's, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, uh, Duncan Stiles uh, wrote in. Our friend Duncan, and uh, he said that he'd like to mention that uh, Amiga legend Eric Schwartz has brought his monthly comic strip Sabrina Online to a close after 20 years. Were wow. you aware of this? I knew I knew about the comic strip, but I did not know he'd closed it. Yeah, yeah. So this is 20 years, and he did you know the the Amy the Squirrel and all that stuff. Oh yeah, we just talked. He had uh, Amiga J, I think it was just put out a big compilation disc of his, and uh, I knew that had been a long running. Strip, but I didn't realize it actually had ended. I wonder why he ended it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe he just <laughs> felt like he'd said all he, he wanted to say. It's hard to run. So, can you imagine running a comic for 20 years? No. That's insane. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> I'll give the guy credit for holding out that long. Maybe he's got something else cooking, too. Yeah, that's true. You know? That's true. He could have something else going well, on. Oh, happy trails to yeah. that comic strip. That's yeah. a good run. It's a hell of a run. Yeah. Um, Duncan also said that he just finished the Thundercats episode. He said it was a terrible game. Yeah. I agree. Uh, he said, I first played that on the Amstrad, <coughs> the CPC, and he said for an 8-bit game it was passable. You know, it had some nice digitized pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, the Thunder, I guess the, the version on the C, they just basically converted the music from the CPC over to the uh, over to the Amiga, and maybe that's why it suffered a little bit. Yeah, because it was crap. Yeah. Which is funny, because the, that fellow has done a lot of great music. Right, right. Not 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 uh, one of it. In fact, ironically, the... the David Whitaker, the guy that did that music, is, did the music for Alfred Chicken, which it's much better, in my opinion. It can't be much worse there, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Sean Courtney wrote in, and he said, uh, General Mills Corporation's monster-themed breakfast cereals, collectively called the Monster Cereals. Makes sense. There are there are five. There's five of these things. Okay. Okay. So, tell me the ones that you know. Well, there's, there's Boo Berry... I'm sure there's, there's Frankenberry, there's uh, uh, Count Chocula, yeah, Boo Berry's one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, you got three of the five. There's Did a couple guess? real obscure ones um, these that are the, they that these they, are dis- they discontinued them too. Oh boy. Um, While you're thinking, I just want to say a special hello to everybody out there in the the chat. We're streaming for the first time on YouTube Gaming, so uh, welcome <laughs> to the show. Um, and uh, is there a thanks mu- for being here? Is there a mummy one? There is, there is. I knew giving you extra time would help. You know, I honestly, I, I remember a, a mummy one, and I don't. I know there was five. I know there was at least five, and I remember two of them were gone. And I was surprised to hear that I'd never heard of them until after they were gone. But they brought them back like a couple years ago, like for a quick reboot. Mm-hmm. Does that? I think. Okay. Uh, are you Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. We have. Fruit Brute. Fruit Brute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd have never gotten that one. <laughs> and, as you said, Fruity Yummy Mummy. Fruity Yummy <laughs> Fair enough. You know, being on this low-carb diet, and I, I remember you telling me about this, um, you know, sometimes the urge to eat cereal overpowers me. Yeah. there's just, Sometimes you just get that Jones. That it's funny, Jones. because I was never a big cereal eater, but when I went on the low-carb, I just... I, it's funny what your body it is. It's, it's like, funny. here's what you want. Go get it now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. body. Um, you look great, by the way. Look at you. Thank you. Thank He's you. lost, what, 20 pounds? Almost 18. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. Um, so, side updates this week. Um, the biggest news is, uh, well, Chris <coughs> Folds did the Mr. Blobby. Chris Folds. Chris Folds. 
So he did Mr. Blobby, and uh, that was quite a quite an interesting. Yeah, role. and he also has a developer Q and A on yes. that, so check that out. Folds um, has done it again. Uh, the the biggest news this this was very surprising to me is that Dreamcatcher uh, put up an article about the Amiga six hundred found in the um, in the rectory of <laughs> on Craggy Island. Yes, I read that. <laughs> so I was amused. I, it's funny. I I I, I, I seems like I, I remember vaguely. I vaguely remember them playing a video game, but I could I didn't have any idea what it was of all the ones, right? But uh, uh, that's cool, kind of cool, you know, yeah, wacky, you know. I used to like I used to watch that show back to that. That was pretty cool. Oh yeah, I love it. I've got the box set. And, I'm a big uh, but Jack I, fan. I never once I never once saw the Amiga 600, so I've got to go back and rewatch them. Um, so uh, those were pretty much all the side updates, except for what you played. What did you play this week? This week, you know, I'm still on my uh, my. Chop suey kung fu karate uh, kick, and so this week I played Karate Kid Two, which Ooh. is a, I'm in the minority, I know, but that's my favorite Karate Kid movie mm-hmm. by far. And uh, I uh, now you yeah. like two more than one? Yes, absolutely. Two is the one where they it starts out and they they have to go to Japan, right? <laughs> they go to Okinawa, right? Yeah, that's Japan. Uh, and uh, uh, it's not mainland Japan; it's Okinawa. It's still part of the country. Well, I'm just saying. In the movie, they refer to it as we're going to Okinawa. They okay. Say we're going to Japan. Okay. Um, but uh, uh, he goes to Okinawa to fight the evil Sato and his nephew Chosen yeah. over the love of Mr. Miyagi's uh, ex, ex-girlfriend from when he was young. That's when he left the island. Mm-hmm. And so... Cho- and so uh, this is the one where they chop up all the bonsai trees, too, right? Or is that part three? Um... I think that's the third one. I don't remember that. I remember they go through and wreck the whole village that yeah that uh, saw that uh, Mr. Miyagi's pe- his, Mr. Miyagi's father dies in it. Very mm-hmm. sad. But I thought it was cool. It was neat to see the island. I liked the I liked as they explored that sort of culture and mm-hmm. uh, I just dug it. I liked the, everything about it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like the first one too. And there there are lots more parts of the first one that are more iconic. You know, the crane kick, go for the knee. You know, right, right. You know, sweep the leg, Johnny. There's a lot of All quotes that in the first one. But uh, uh, Peter Cetera did the haunting love theme, The Glory of Love. That's all, the power No, of love. That's, not, that's the wrong song. Uh, the Glory of Love. Glory of Love. That's the glory. Number one hit single from the movie. Uh, and uh, it was good, but anyway, the, the game. I, uh, having played, it, I haven't aired a lot of these because I've played them and they're so bad that <laughs> I can't stay with them long enough to actually to actually record anything. I'll probably what you should do is just I'll probably yeah. compilate right. those. And so I've I've been going through and trying to pick out the ones that are not crap. Uh, and uh, so Karate Kid Part Two, I have this amazing run, <laughs> which is because if you, I, I screw up immediately two times, then I go on a good run where I get to the last guy, uh, and then. I'll, uh, but that was fun, and then I'll, now it, does it does it work? There are each because I haven't watched your video yet. Each oh. one of the guys are like they look physically different, right? It's not like really. no. Oh, no, okay, not really. But it does have the iconic chopping through blocks of ice scene, mm-hmm. and the even more iconic catching a fly with the chopsticks. You can't have a watch know. as I attempt it. All right, it's a glorious moment in Amigos history. You'll have to watch it to see if he does it or not. And then the other game I did this week was a Thalian joint. You remember what they're famous for making? Oh, what did they make? The, the best Lion. game ever, Lionheart. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. And they're back. Actually, this is a this is one of their <laughs> earliest. This may be their earliest title. It's called Chambers of Shaolin. Ooh. This was a surprise too. Uh, amongst the other junkaroos, this was a pretty good game. The concept behind this is real wacky, where you actually can train to be. You can train yourself to up your statistics by going through all these kind of wacky. Monk training rituals. I mean, they're wacky, but the graphics are good. The sounds really good, and uh, the fighting's pretty good. I, I'm not good at it. You get to fight a dragon, kind of cool. That is cool. So I, I, I like two D, two D side scrolling. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, both of them. But they were fun, and uh, I've got a couple more that are. Get, I'm probably gonna bust out the compilation this week with all the, all the junkers in one big wad. Mm-hmm. The Amiga has a, a, a plethora of. Crum, crummy karate games, <laughs> so we will put it. We will put together the karate, the dog karate compilation. But the, yeah, that was fun. I've got plenty more coming. So awesome! What news have ye this Let me week? Break out the mystical tablet of fun here. So um, 
we had, let's see what we've got here. Oh, this is a big story, I think. Um, a, they have, and I don't know when this came out, but yeah, keep it in my mind. The Rocket Ranger Extended Collector's Edition is now taking pre-orders. Um, Rocket Ranger is great. Great game, in my opinion. Uh, at least as better, I... Better than Defender of the Crown. Yeah. Much better. Um, but of course, I haven't played it for a while, so that could change. Uh, if Rocket Ranger Extended Collector's Edition is anything like Defender of the Crown's uh, edition, that's good. And from what he's got laying here on, in front of us, as we look at it on the webpage here, it looks good. It looks like there's a, a, a multiple discs. They, mm -hmm. He's got the uh, big, beautiful box, beautiful art. It looks like there's uh, postcards or coasters or God knows what. Well, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. There's sticker. a world map with codes for the Lunarium. Yeah, that was the one thing I hated about Rocket Ranger. <laughs> was a, and the thing is, in this game, there's you can't just say, oh, I'll just copy, I'll crack it. You can't now. Because that, that tells the game where you're flying to. And right. so you have to have the map. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. So on the flip side, back in the day, who remembers back in the day, in the glorious days, when you had to have the little handouts and stuff that came with it. Some games would, All come, the ephemera. With, that would come with letters. Mm -hmm. They would come with shirts. And they would come with crumpled up maps and and uh, uh, things you had to piece together. And it was it was fun. It was You had the visceral sensation of grabbing the paper and holding it up as you play the game. Right. This is what Rocket Ranger brings to the table. So it's sure it's a pain in the butt. But, hey, you can stretch that map out and say, I'm going here. I'm That's right. i this much there in Plot your course. That's right. You know, the embarrassing thing about Rocket Ranch is a lot like uh, Blue Max. It's when you instantly wreck on takeoff. Which I did, <laughs> <laughs> I did that many times. Like, burp, right in the dirt. So Rocket Ranger, again, this is the uh, Cinemaware, uh, uh, what is it called? Their classic division. The, right. Or, mm -hmm. And I'm still not sure how that... I think they're a totally separate company from Cinemaware, the company that just got bought by this uh, this other conglomerate. Is it Germans that bought that? Swedish. Swedish. The Swedes. Oh, yeah, they're going to do the virtual reality stuff. We talked about that a while back. I'm sure Sven is all up in this, our buddy, our good pal Sven. And, uh, hey, shipping dates, shipping aside and missing target dates aside, I don't think there's a lot of people working on this stuff. Sort of like a, probably not too many people in the operation. Mm -hmm. And if they do a good job... Just like they did with the fit of the crown, take your time, get it done, boys. It should be a good deal. Yeah, and they they've sold they've already sold over fifty of these things. I think that there were five hundred available, and there are four hundred and forty something left. Uh, four hundred and thirty four in Those, stock. So. Much like the defender of the crown, will go quick. And I will say, the defender of the crown, I think they're down to the last like. I saw a note that said they're almost out. So wow. I think they're probably less than twenty five. So if you got a hold of one of those, then you've got a real collector's item. You know. Uh, um, a 500 unit runs small. It is. And Very small. worldwide, again, no brainer. And mm -hmm. if, the, if the price is right, I'd go for it. Does, he have a, does they have a price list? Yeah, forty four ninety five. That's not bad. Yeah. That's yeah. not bad for all you've got. I mean, I thought that I thought the Defending the Crown Collection was worth it. I like that was worth it. Mm -hmm. So so anyway, there you go. Maybe one of these days we'll give that away. Well, that one you might have to pry my cold dead hands. <laughs> um, History of Amiga Part 10 from Ars Teca. Ars Technica, Technica. Excuse me, is out. Uh, I, this is an interesting series. Have you watched any of these? Or have you well, read this them? is a this is I a series. Say. And actually, one of our very first interactions, I think, was I sent you this way back in like two thousand seven. Yeah. yeah, and it's uh, been around forever. Yeah, right? and I've been reading it ever since I was in Korea. I started reading it. That's and, crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's uh, part ten, well, so I don't know. This is the part where it goes the crap, the yeah. crapper. Unfortunately. <laughs> Downfall. So this is an article, and the same guy, Jeremy Reamer, uh, he's done this since the beginning. I mean, this is um, this is why I, you know, I read this and I felt like I got the Amiga story. It's it's in depth. It's easy to read, unlike a lot of Amiga histories that you read. This one keeps you engaged. So I highly recommend this whole series, and it's glad I'm glad that it's still going on. I will say, if you if you're not a reader. Uh, but that right there, the pie chart that Bo just put up. Yeah. Not the revenue went from <laughs> lots to like right in the toilet. Um, and but uh, if you're not a reader, I will replug the uh, Nostalgia Nerds uh, piece mm -hmm. one and two, and also uh, Kim Justice did an excellent Amiga Rise and Fall video. So there's there's some good stuff out there. You know, we live in a glorious time. Yeah. Where, where these independent uh, producers are making these excellent. Uh, documentary films. I mean, you can just sit back and 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 for nothing, you know, and enjoy these things. Then you've got your your uh, 
you know, better the billions and your and your Viva uh, Viva Amiga people that you know that are that are making those, and those are tremendous. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm about halfway through Viva Amiga. Okay, you want to give any kind of an early review, or you want to wait to finish it before you start talking? I don't hate it. How about that? I'm not done with it, so I, I think I'll wait until I'm fully completed. Okay, uh, but uh, yeah, my computer died. <laughs> Oh. My poor computer. Yeah, you need to... One of the reasons I knocked out Sha- Chambers of Shaolin so quickly is because uh, I came home yesterday, or two days ago, and my computer was at the CMOS battery dead screen. Ooh. Not good. So, Don't you have that little HP stream that you were... Well, I've got, other, I've got other avenues, but yeah. but uh, So, I'm on it. I'm okay. on it. But uh, yeah, that, that's a pain. So, But anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's something that uh, you can check out. Uh the uh, did you, I don't know if you guys looked at this. The Amiga games list. I'd never heard of this. This uh, this is. I think didn't we talk about this last? I think we talked about last it last week. No, no, we talked about Obligements anniversary. Right. This is their mega mega game list that gets updated uh, a lot. Oh, okay. And uh, um, it's it's pretty interesting. I looked through it. Uh, of course, Obligements. We mentioned last week the French magazine. That how many did it say? Was it twenty years they'd been around? Some, yeah. Some ludicrous number. So. That's something uh, worth checking out uh, if you uh, if you're so inclined. Um, I think that's pretty much what I've got. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's funny. I was listening to uh, I was listening to the newest uh, Retro Asylum on, 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 uh, on, during one of my many journeys this week, and the fellows were on there talking about playing this Amiga Live. Have you ever tried this? Have you Amiga heard? Live. Do you know what that is? Is this some sort of a like browser based Amiga emulator? It's a streaming. It's a it's a uh, multiplayer online Amiga emulator. It's really? FS. Yeah, uh, and uh, it lets you hook up um, to servers. It reminds me of the old. Uh, it's one. Of the, it's just the old sort of game server thing. So we set up some servers. You guys can log on and it, and it you literally it downloads the ROM and everything from what they said. I haven't tried it. I've seen. I saw it a while back, and I was like, I wonder if this is any good. But I think this week I'm going to look into that. That might be something worth trying. But they played, I think it was Supercars 2 in there, and it looked like it was doing real well. Oh, cool. So good good on them, because I haven't tried that. And I, I'd heard of it, but not tried it. So uh, uh, they, those guys were on it, and they seemed to have a real good time with well, it. Well, if so. we get it up and running, we can do some remote Amigos plays yeah. action. I, uh, uh, In fact, I think they devoted pretty much their new episode to it. I haven't gotten too far into it. But uh, love Retro Asylum. Always a good listen. Uh, and... Uh, those guys are they were at the front of this one, but uh, yeah, Amiga Live. If anyone out there is, hasn't tried it, look into it. Maybe we can all get together and have a big Amigos throwdown. Can sometime. you imagine like what's a, what would be a good like a Worms match, like a four four player Worms? That'd be throwdown. sweet. And uh, from what they said, I mean, it literally, it, it does the ROM and everything. You don't have to ever have anything. So we'll look into it. But I wanted to mention it in case somebody wanted to get the front jump front on it and, and uh, report back. Let us right. know if you try it and you like it. That's right. All right, um, well, if that's it for the news, let's go ahead and move on to the game of the week, Alfred Chicken. <laughs> that's my chicken sound. It's pretty good. It's pretty good chicken sound. Uh, I have not resized the screen properly. No, sir. Let's go ahead and make that smaller. You're living in twilight. There you go. So, while he's mailing around here, I will start with this Alfred Chicken. Interesting name. It is an interesting Do you know name. why they named it that? Um, I, I read this and I was like, I never thought about that. I always assumed it was named after Alfred the Butler from the Adams Family. Incorrect, sir. Mm. Chicken Alfredo. Oh. That's where the common... Odd. That's the common uh, uh, reasoning behind the name. So, <clears throat> this was released multiple times. <laughs> I looked at the AGA version, which was released in 93... <clears throat> I also had a, a cup of coffee with the CD32 version. Um, this was published by Mindscape. Mindscape. I like Mindscape. They published some good stuff. Uh, ba- the, they published Battletoads. Did you know Amiga had a Battletoads? I did know that. I learned that. Yeah, and it's... Uh, T-I-L. It's hard. It's, not, it's weird. It's, it's not a hard game. game. Uh, they also published... I like published, mind you, but they published a game I always like called Deja Vu. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just Isn't like, that sort of a out of this world type? No, it's sort of a. Uh, it's more like a shadow gate. It's more of a adventure game, but it's got a really interesting drag and drop mm-hmm. system. It's pretty good. They also published uh, Finnish British Big Top and Moonstone. Oh, okay. Now, and the developer Twilight, uh, they actually we've done a lot of their games more or less. Uh, Bonanza Brothers, which is that's a 
arcade port, isn't there an arcade game called Bonanza Bros? Never heard of it. Really? Uh, cool World, which I assume is cool. based on the god awful right. Bowie movie. But Bo- Bowie's Bowie had a that. song in the movie oh, okay. called Cool World. Was That's that, what, that was the name of the song too. It seems like he was actually had. Cool. Did he not have a cameo or something in that? I could have sworn. Maybe I, he did. I've not seen. That was cool the movie World. where the you uh, the, the cartoons the intermingling woman, yeah. with. Uh, it's like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the except bad. much crummy. Yeah. Uh, they, Twilight also did Hong Kong Fooey. Number one super guy. Which I've never seen. Have you ever seen that? I've seen his cartoon plenty yeah. of times. I always liked Hong Kong Fooey. The Mega Twins. Rough and Ready in Space. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Top Cat. Another Hanna <laughs> Barbera cast off. Mascot of somebody's I see a lot of, somewhere. I see a lot of Amigos plays based on these. And speaking of which, they did WWF WrestleMania, which oh, was wait, featured but... this week by uh, Dreamcatcher. Uh, and he also did European Rampage. I, I just got to, just a, as a quick tangent. Uh, I played both those games uh, back in the day, and WrestleMania angers me to no end because it's as close as you're ever going to get to a home version of like WWF Superstars or WWF uh, WrestleFest. Mm-hmm. They've got they literally ripped the graphics out of it and it's made it suck, right. suck, suck, <laughs> suck. And uh, 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 the other one, which they which Twilight didn't do, was called the WWF European, and it sucked. The European game sucked. Uh, I'm sorry to Europe for that. That was a travesty. So, but anyway, it, this week if you're interested in that stuff, uh, it is featured on the on the web page. Um, <clears throat> the uh, so yeah, so the developer was well traveled. They did they did a lot of decent stuff. I wouldn't say they did anything awesome. Um, this game released for the uh, ECS and, or really the OCS, also the AGA chipset got a release and the CD32. The CD32. As far as I can tell, is the AGA version with uh, with controller support for multiple buttons and what and I believe had a uh, CD soundtrack. I don't think it had the same soundtrack, but don't hold me to that because mine didn't have any soundtrack that I played. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is a 2D platformer. Uh, interesting, and I think this may be the only game we've ever. I I bet this is the only game on the Amiga that can say this. Amiga was not the original uh, port. The port for this came from the Game Boy. Really? And the Game Boy version was the original version. And from what I read from on the wiki and a couple other places, uh, the Amiga version differs from the NES version in a lot of ways. The NES version of this uh, is only got five levels and was generally not light. Mm. I've not played it. I don't know if you've ever played it. No. The... Uh, uh, the Amiga version w- was modeled after the Game Boy version, which had mo- mo- more levels. Mm-hmm. And from what I read, the Amiga version is basically almost exactly like the Game Boy version, just colored in, effectively. Interesting. So I thought that was kind of neat. And yeah. that way, and really, Game Boy games, if you think about it, would would port well to the Amiga given the button situation. Sure. Cause I'm assuming on the uh, I don't know what button situation you would, on the uh, I assume they had jump for, has a but was a button. Right. They just replaced the up with jump. Yeah. and They were done. And I don't got a problem with that. Yeah. Um, what? So why don't you go ahead and take us through? What do you think? Uh, how did the gameplay work and the object and that sort of thing? Okay. So this game is uh, kind of a standard um, puzzle platformer where you are collecting a certain number of items to move uh, from level to level. Uh, You have to collect a certain number of diamonds. Uh, If you're watching right now, you can see uh, there is a uh, diamond countdown. Then there's also a certain number of balloons that you need to free as well uh, to progress through the stages. Uh, The stages are colorful. Um, There are different kind of bad guys that get in your way. But uh, a lot of the challenge comes from just finding all of the different areas where there are all the where all the diamonds are. Um, you have uh, you have a couple power ups. You've got a ball that you can throw around. Uh, you've got an invincibility feather. Although the, the that's really a misnomer. The the feather it does not give you invincibility. It just kind of travels around you and knocks out enemies. But if an enemy should somehow slip through, uh, you'll still perish. You sort of have to get yourself in position for that thing to right. work. Uh, there's, this is a one-hit kill game, which makes it slightly frustrating. Yeah. Uh, it would be mm-hmm. a, a lot better if this game was more like, say, The Adams Family, where you have a life bar. Um, 
for some reason, the balloons in this game are attached to anvils, which I thought was interesting. Um, there are lots of secret rooms to find. Uh, this kind of reminded me of James Pond 2, um, just in the way that everything is a little bit non-linear. Now, James Pond 2 is extra non-linear because there's multiple exits and things like that. In this game, once you collect the amount of diamonds that you need, you, I think you just automatically progress to the next level. Well, you've got to you got to go up and hit that last balloon. And then, oh, yeah. yeah it yeah. takes you off. This, it's funny you say that because this game reminded me the most. And I, Now, it's not as good, but it reminded me of Adam's Family to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First of all, this game proves unequivocally that Adam's Family could have had the awesome backgrounds that they did. Sure. That sure. irritates me because this has the backgrounds and it's running just fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, this isn't as good as Adam's Family to me, but it's got the big, colorful graphics and Adam's Family. It had to kind of. It's got kind of a similar. The villains are sort of. I mean, this is this is more of to me. Now you may disagree, but this is a strategy game as much as anything in a certain way. I mean, you have to. A lot of what you do in this involves pe- pecking on buttons. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and later on, you have to you have to use like remote control to move these items around that will that like you need it to go dig through a wall or go, kill a certain thing. It's it's not just like Mario, bam bam, you go from one side to the right. other. It's and, and what I think I think another thing that that makes this unique and better than your standard platformer is when you dispatch of enemies. You're not just jumping on them, but like, you know, Alfred will jump up and then dive down beak first to yeah. impale them from above. Yeah, which uh, it's it's neat. And really, <laughs> you, uh, the ball you get is very Mr. Do-like. It just sort of bounces around. It's not right. like it's not like you're shooting a gun, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the, uh, the bad guys on this, they're not real, really that varied. You've got your, like, snails, spiky snails. You've got your little wind-up. Mice, toys, I guess. And you've got these like big sort of spiked balls. Mm-hmm. And then when you get to the end bosses for a level, it's just sort of like, how do you describe those aliens? Sort of a blob on a balloon or yeah. something? They, they're they not like... I, they're actually, not meticulously well designed. Like I mean, the they were just... It was sort of a letdown, mm-hmm. you know, those things. I mean, the, the battle was okay. I, right. I, don't get me wrong, I didn't get a, go crazy, but I got okay. But it was just... Uh, that, that part, it's funny, they, that, that's a weak part in terms of graphically mm-hmm. especially when the rest of the game looks so nice right now um when you when you defeat a level you'll get a little bonus flying which is the only time you can really fly <laughs> which is just, odd for you know well, i guess chickens can't fly, where the so. screen scrolls upwards and you try to gather up all these gifts can chickens fly um no Maybe, is it is it one of those things where like domesticated chickens can't fly but wild chickens can? Isn't that a thing with turkeys too? Are there wild chickens? Of course there are. There's wild chickens at Eep's house. Like, where, where, yeah, you, I'm in Eep's house right now. Yeah, it, it, and I don't see any. In my in-laws' house, there's chickens that come out of the jungle. No kidding. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not seeing any wild chickens, but I believe you. Um, the uh, but when you collect all these presents, you get a bonus. And it, it, weird, uh, the weirdest thing is. Uh, when you can point, I mean, there's a lot of weird things in this game. When you complete a level, there's this giant, like, was that a dandelion or mm-hmm. something? And it's a, here, this can help you and, out. And he talks to you, he gives you gifts. Mm-hmm. When you find a secret area, there's a bit where you, like, walk over a big phone, and effectively, I guess you call the guy that was standing right there, and the phone rings, and he gives you the, he'll give you the ball or give you whatever. But when you beat a level, he hawks up a big weird loogie or something, and it shoots around and goes into this machine, and it fires up, and then the thing teleports. You, you know, it's, it's, weird. it's funny because I think back to all the platforming games that we've played on this show, and it shows you just how unique the little mini game that you play in um, Super Frog is. You know, the slot machine, the fruit machine thing. Yeah. Like this game could have used something like that, just a little something extra. I, I think. What did you think about the art package in this? I think it's fine. It's very easy for me to see that this was, now that I know, a colored-in version of the Game Boy. Like, I can see this <laughs> definitely being on the Game Boy. Um, but I don't think it looks bad. I think it's appropriate to the style of game that this is. It's, it's, I think, I find it quite charming, yeah, actually. It, yeah, it's I a, think that, like, for example, um, these screws that we're looking at right now, they're, they're modeled pretty well as far as the shading and things go. They could have really cheaped out on a lot of this stuff. Yeah, the, uh, I think... I think Alfred the character is cute. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, the funny thing about this game is how um, everything is sort of nondescript in a way. I mean, and what I don't mean that as an insult either. I mean, it's just 
This is like, everyday objects. A lot of times when you have a, a platform or any game that's driven by a char- lead character, they do some kind of crap, they give him crazy attitude, mm-hmm. or he gets kind of right. crazy gimmick. Really, Alfred has little to no personality. Mm-hmm. He's got no gimmick. He's not a butt kicker. Right. He can't really fly. He's, he's also very small compared to everything else in his world. He I mean. is. <laughs> he's small. He he. And he, I mean, he's just this sort of these. And the bad guys are the same way. They're kind. They're. I wouldn't even say they're super cuddly or cute. They're just sort of kind of cute. Right. You know the the villains are sort of cute. Mm-hmm. They're not evil looking or anything. Right. Like this would be perfect for a kid, mm-hmm. except that it. I thought it was pretty hard. It you know it's hard, but I bet if you gave a kid if this was a kid's only game, they get they get pretty good at it. But you do have to put in some time. <coughs> now I don't think it's unfair. Like Super Frog was unfair, um, but it's definitely challenging for sure. Yeah, but, the one, one hit kills are a killer. Yeah, one of the things about it. Well, I mean you've got so like we mentioned there are several stages, you, and they may they're made up of, of backgrounds and foreground objects like kids blocks and screws and with wood like and and. Uh, Clowns and clocks, and there's a level with books that are hanging. There's even an underwater level when you get real far into, which I never got that far, where where Alfred has like a snorkel. Mm-hmm. And did you ever get that far? No. And, yeah. No. Um, but a lot of the game involves flipping switches. Sometimes the switches are a literal big button. Sometimes you have to peck when you pull down, or your guy will mm-hmm. peck the ground like a chicken, right. and he can turn stuff on and off. Mm-hmm. And so. Throughout the levels, you'll see like various cubes that are outlined in dashes. Basically, they're just right. empty space with an outline. And what you'll do is often you'll peck the ground, and that that cube will become solid. Yeah, it works just like the the blocks in Mario. 3. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The Switch Palace. And um, there's also blocks that are like arrows, and you can use those to move stuff around. And a lot of times, it's stuff like uh, ball, little balls that'll make that use like as an elevator to mm-hmm. smash through stuff, like we mentioned before. Um, the uh, 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 some of the sequences I thought were particularly wacky were was the uh, moving the ball around to, to like I said you had to basically effectively jump up and down this ball that's moving up and use it use it to to get you over obstacles and stuff. That's the kind of stuff that makes it pretty. I, it seemed to me it would be pretty difficult. One of the problems I that I was having with it, but of course I'm me, was the, the levels like. Boat mentioned that you you're on one level, but that doesn't mean you don't go through exits. There'll be multiple exits you go through and come back, and you go kind of go over the same ground. I got lost a lot. It's yeah, this is the same old story um, with a, a lot of these platformers that scroll in both directions. Which you know, on the face of it, it's cool, but it's real easy to kind of lose your way. And you could argue that that's part of the challenge <coughs> of the game. Yeah, but uh, I found it frustrating. I'd wager if you played this a ton. You would probably eventually memorize this stuff if you had the capacity, but I I, I didn't have the capacity, I mm-hmm. guess. Um, like I said, there are the hidden areas. There's a lot of hidden stuff. Which I know you like that stuff, and that's another thing that reminded me of Adam's family. It'd just be like you just walk through this wall, and then there's, you know, I'm sure there was a lot of cheat guides for this or something or yeah. facts that yeah. came out. And I love that stuff. Yeah. Um, the uh, um, it's a cute game. I actually I. I didn't hate it. I liked it actually, but it, it it's not the kind of game that I'm having any sort of luck with. Yeah. Unfortunately, but I I really did find it. Uh, you know, graphics. Everybody beats the ground on graphics. Graphics. This game has nice graphics, but they are not your conventionally nice graphics. This is not like, you know, this is not going to blow you away with visually like Lionheart would or or uh, even something like Zool. Where it's, I mean, it's just where there's a lot going on, or even your, or even your super frogs. This is sort of a simple, uh, stylized graphics. That I mean, the backgrounds are nice. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, really, it's just sort of a, it's cute in a very simple way, which which I liked. I thought I found that quite endearing. I, I thought the character was cool, uh, and having watched the end of the game, I have to say I'm not going to spoil it, but the ending is sort of cute. Did you, I'm, I, I, I didn't watch the full playthrough. Yeah, well, so. I'm sure you, you, this is the kind of game I can see you sitting around a beat one of these days, yeah, so you'll, yeah. you'll get to see it eventually. But overall, I thought it was neat. Now, this game, you know, it it came out in a time where there was still a lot of stuff around, but there weren't a ton of what reviews. What is this, 92? This is the, the HEA version came out in 93. I don't know if the other ones came out a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I looked at, I didn't find many reviews, and I looked at a couple of spots. 
Uh, most the three reviews I found gave it a uh, which was Amiga Concept. I'm not really even familiar with that one. Amiga yeah. Dream and um, Amiga Joker, which I think is the German magazine. Uh, it scored 65, 68, 72. Okay. Right? That's kind of, I mean, that's pretty brutal considering what Thundercats got. This yeah. is way better than that, for example. You know, I think that people might have been suffering from a little bit of platformer fatigue at this time. Because uh, remember, 93, this this takes us after Sonic and after Mario, and you kind of reach the high crest of all that stuff. Well, I think this is a game that you can release during that era just because it's a little different. And it's, it's also... Not trying to comp- it's certainly not going to say a Sonic where it's super hyper. <laughs> yeah, and it's also, again, we're talking about the Amiga as a platform, and they just they don't have a whole, whole lot of quality platforming games. Right, exactly. I mean, going up, this is definitely a better game than Zool, no question. Yeah, I agree. And I'll... <laughs> I'm going to get crucified, but I liked it. I liked it a little better than Super Frog. Just because it's, those games were so busy and it's so hyper. Yeah, and you don't have to. They, there's not a billion things to collect. I agree with you. I like yeah. this more than Super I, Frog. I, I just, I, the, that, the, that kind of took it out on me. Um, they, they made a sequel for this called Super Alfred Chicken. It was a Super Nintendo game. Uh, it had new levels. It, you had a lot, But it had a lot of the stuff the Amiga version had, because if you recall, the Nintendo version... Uh, didn't have right. Like I said, it was, right. so it's that's kind of in a weird way. This was sort of partially ported to the Super Nintendo, which mm-hmm. I've, I've not tried that either. But I'll I'll, uh, I'll have a look at it. Uh, there was also a PAL version uh, put out. It was like one of those two and a half D numbers. Uh, so I, again, I haven't seen that. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't. Who would have thunk it? By the way, that's yeah. kind of, something I thought was bizarre. <laughs> I wanted to mention this that. Uh, uh, and I, re- I tried my best to, and this is something where I can see Dreamcatcher maybe could, he has the connections and the brilliance to find this stuff out. There was a, uh, um, in, 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 a, in 1993, there was a, 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 a by election in the Christchurch Dorset uh, uh, area. What is that? Constituary? Constituencies? Right. So we're talking about New Zealand. Right. And so somebody there. Uh, the, it was the product manager, the Amiga version of this. He registered to run, and the party he registered under was the Alfred Chicken Party. <laughs> and Alfred Chicken was not something else yeah. that we know. No, of, right? no, this was no. This he was, was the product was, manager was, of the Amiga version of the game. Oh, okay, okay. And so the Alfred Chicken Party ran for the Christchurch Dorset. <laughs> Constituency. Uh, unfortunately, government's weird in other countries. Uh, they don't have it together like we do. It either. didn't. He, he didn't do well. He finished uh, second to last. He only got eighteen votes, but he was two votes ahead of the Rainbow Party, which I don't know what that was. But Maybe I, that was the Rainbow Islands product. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the uh, uh, it was the Alfred Chicken Party, as it's quoted here, was cited along with other. Frivolous or commercial candidates is a reason to increase the number of signatures required for an individual to be nominated for a political candidate at an election. <laughs> so this is one thing in history. I did find this, and it is in the bio. It is in the a legal document that's in there. Mm-hmm. And they actually mentioned this by name. That's awesome. And there was another thing they mentioned, which I, I think it was a TV show that they were like, "This is no good." So <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Um, another thing I read was there was a there was a toll free number in the U.S. that you could call for Alfred Chicken. I think that Brent's story has something to do with this, so. and and he would give you a promotional speech about the game, mm-hmm. which I think. Well, kind of wanky. you know what that reminds me of. I don't know if you remember the seminal film Snakes on a Plane, mm-hmm. but there was actually a number that you could call. And Samuel L. Jackson would call whatever number you specified and tell that person to go see Snakes on a Plane. So I call, I use this thing, and everybody I knew got a call that said, Hello, this is Samuel L. Jackson. You need to go see Snakes on a Plane. So, <laughs> didn't work. Didn't work. That movie Flopperoo. It did. I still saw it. <laughs> What'd you think? It's pretty terrible. Yeah, it yeah. looked bad. Yeah. But it did have Samuel L. Jackson. It was called Snakes uttering, on a Plane. Uttering I mean, those <laughs> magical words yeah. that we can't just say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it is it is a decent. Just a little, little game. bit more snakes on a plane trivia. Oh um, my gosh, they, keep it coming! <laughs> a little more. So that famous line was not originally in the movie. Uh, it, it was somebody suggested it on the internet, and it became so big that they're like, "Well, we've got to put it in." And that actually, they had to change the rating, and so they went and they put in a bunch of nudity and other stuff just so they could get, <laughs> get that R. That that R. I knew they'd re-recorded and, that line, but yeah. I didn't realize that. What a waste that, of time! Isn't that funny? Um. 
eBay. What's going on with Alfred Chicken on eBay? I, I checked. Uh, I could not find an NTS release of this. Mm. I could not find anyone selling one. And I could not find... Now, I, surely this got released. But 93? Hmm, maybe not. Yeah. You know, you're late to the on the date there. Especially if they had to choose, like, do you want to release that or Super Alfred Chicken for the Super Nintendo? Right. We only have X amount of dollars. Yeah, you never know. Um, so, there were plenty of copies all around the world. Uh, uh, the boxed uh, Amiga uh, version of what I think was just the uh, OCS ECS release, I was seeing twenty to thirty bucks US mm-hmm. shipped. Not too bad. Uh, CD thirty two versions uh, around seventeen to thirty two bucks US shipped. Also not too bad. So now the uh, the CD thirty two versions were either in a sleeve or in a CD case. So you wouldn't get the, the, I don't know what kind of Alfred Chicken goodies they stuck in yeah. a box. They I don't some, know how much ephemera came with this. I don't think there was maybe a Maybe they put some feed in there, the, a yeah. feather. Oh, the chat agrees with you, by the way, about the uh, the scores being crazy, especially, you know, with Thundercats getting higher a higher average score. Yeah. Then. Um, I'm looking at this question that just popped up in a Amiga oh, we're, we're gaming gonna, competition. Gonna, oh. let, let me handle the chat. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, so... That's pretty much all I've got. It's a decent game. It's above middle of the road, but not in the upper echelon of what I would consider, like, say, your... I mean, really, Adam's Family is probably still the best one we've, we've played platform-wise. Yeah. That's not yeah. lying hard. If you, if you had to rank the platform games in order, uh, if you just had to name your top three that we've done on the show so far. <sighs> you're, you're putting me out on this one. Well, I would put... Obviously, I would put... Adam's family right there near the top. Um, I'm trying to think what I mean. We've played all, we've played two of the James Ponds. We've played Super Frog, and I didn't like really any of those that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gods, do you count that one as a platform? Sure, you can count that as a platform. I'd put that in the top, and I liked Lionheart a lot more than you. So, I'd probably so that's your top that. three. Yeah. Okay. Unless I'm forgetting one. Mm-hmm. I mean, there might be something. I, I think for me. Tur- I mean, do you count like Turk and two in that no. list? To that's, me, that's a different kind of game. Yeah, I didn't put that in yeah. there. But uh, I, I was so bad at that game, and I wanted to be good, but it, I love the I love everything about yeah. it so much. But it just I'm not good. At it. I like I just tend to like the more cutesy stuff, and I I mean this is probably this and James Bond two. And of course, Adam's family is at the top. I, I really need to go back and replay James, James Bond, Bond two, 2. Was the more I think about it, this is uh, it was sort of on par with this. I mm-hmm. I like the uh, I like the concept behind the robotic, you know, limbs and that. I, that was pretty slick. Yeah. So you know, yeah. it was awful. And it was awful clever too. Mm-hmm. So I may res- I may rescind that. That was uh, this and that. I. They're both. Cl- I like the fact that they both try to be different, right? You know, and this so this is probably in that same category. Mm-hmm. Now that I think about it hard enough, it's you know they they uh, the Amiga had certain limitations we all are familiar with, and there were things that did well and things that didn't do well. And for these kind of games, I mean, this game I think they probably fleshed out what they wanted to do pretty easily. I don't think they, the hardware limited them, and I'm pretty sure they'd be pretty happy with what they came up with, and then. Let it be judged on the merits of the gameplay. And the gameplay's pretty good. And it's pretty different. It's unique. So I haven't played as many platformers as you, but I don't think I've played one quite like this. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, well, uh, let's move on to our questions segment for the week. So if you have a question, uh, you can either ask us live in the chat room here on YouTube Gaming, or you can um, send it over to questions at amigospodcast.com. Our first question comes from Paul Kitching, and he says, Aaron, can you lend him five pounds? Um, I can lend you a hundred pounds, you know. You'll get me a liposuction machine, and I'll, I'll send it over. <laughs> All right. That's all we need to say about that. Uh, David McCrandles asks, uh, okay, Amiga Gaming Competition. What game would you pick, and who wins, me or you? What game would we pick to fight over? Yeah. <sighs> what game do you think we're pretty evenly matched at? Well, I would just just for the immediacy of it, I would almost pick Schnooka because mm-hmm. uh, we like playing that. That's I, true. I know we had a pretty a pretty good competition there. Um, I would like I, I, to have a go with uh, either Phoenix Freddy or possibly uh, the James Pond Olympic game, which I can't. We need to go right back to that. Yeah, James Pond. That was pretty Underwater fun. Olympics. Uh, that was another fun one that I, I'd like to go against you at. 
I've never gotten over that bitter defeat in TV sports basketball. <laughs> Considered I thought I was, I'm a good hand at that game. Sometimes we just need to sit down whenever we have time. This is another one of those things. Whenever we have time, and just play all these games again. What, what, there's so many great ones we need to revisit. What pops into your head? I was thinking about Lotus, <laughs> one of the Lotus games, two player action in Lotus Two. I think would be pretty evenly matched. Always a good time. Uh, sensible soccer. Going again with that. I think we drew last time. I think we probably, you, we you probably draw your, again. I think you scored on yourself in that one, didn't you? Was that, wasn't that the one? I would not be surprised. Um, I think we're pretty close in speedball too, as well. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of good games that um, we'll just have to we'll have to have our own hexa amiga decathlon. Yeah, yeah, as long as it's not something like you would smoke me. Uh, really, you'd probably smoke me at Lotus, but certainly at Adam's family. I right. Yeah. Smoke. Any anything that we yeah, would something really like that, like yeah. score wise. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, great question, um, David. Thanks for asking. Um, and, uh, oh, and hey, Henrik, you just popped in the chat. What's going on, man? You're not from Asia after all. <laughs> um, I'm an idiot. No. Um, so, uh, Daz actually wrote in with a question. He said, uh, have you played Frontier Elite? Me. Aaron. Frontier Elite, yes. Great opening. I love the game. He, that always amazed me that that could fit on a disc. I never could understand how those elite games could fit on one disc. He, he said it came with a huge star <laughs> map. Do you recall that? Uh, I've seen it. I didn't have it. <laughs> I uh, uh, lost mine. Right. <laughs> um, so uh, Paul Kitching says uh, he actually played Lotus linked up at Ami- uh, uh, Amiga Ireland last weekend. Oh, Amiga so, Ireland. Yeah. Have you heard anything about that? No. Uh, Paul, why don't you... Uh, if you so wanna, it was last weekend. Yeah, it was last weekend. I, I was right so, then, right? I was, I yeah. was close last week. Boy, I wish we could have been there. Yeah. Been great. What are you going to do? You know, I buy my butter from Ireland. Hmm. I do. <laughs> I was just thinking about what it... Th- it things seems about like it would go bad by the time no, we got here. It's called Kerrygold. You can actually get it at Walmart. It's the well, best butter you'll ever have So you actually life. buy it from Walmart. Well, it comes from Ireland. I it see. originates in Ireland. What's it taste like? It tastes like the best butter you've ever had in your What's life. What's there between that and other butters? Like, it just has more of a richness. I don't know. You might not like it. Because it tastes different than, like, it doesn't taste nearly as bland. Um, you can taste a little bit of, like, I don't know, something other than butter in there. Mm. And um, But I melted over steaks and stuff, and it's great. Wow. Yeah. Sounds healthy. It is healthy. <laughs> it is healthy. It's incredibly healthy. Um, so, uh, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Elite Butter. Frontier. So, um, I here's my big hang-up with Elite. Because I know we've talked about reviewing it a couple times. I feel like if I could sit down, if I could have the manual in front of me, you know, and I could see what I'm supposed to do. and But it's just, it's hard to just get into it. And even when you're reading the manual, maybe I need to print it out and just have it next to me. You should just buy the game. They may make a PC version of it too, or you could might be able to play it on like Steam. That's true. Maybe you could get something like that if you don't if you don't want to sit in front of the Amiga and do it. You could probably do it. There, but I mean, I'm not sure it's going to be the same. Right, and then you know, I'd want to do the Amiga version. You know, the thing about the, the thing about Elite and Elite Two is that I mean, this is another one of those games that if you weren't sitting at your computer in the '80s or whatever, like, I can't really exact year it came out, but it was you know. It came out, and you looked at it, and you're just like, "How? what is this amazing thing? Mm-hmm. You couldn't believe. I mean, that was an amazing bit of, I respect the programmer. I mean, it's amazing that they just put that together. It blows my mind. And it seemed huge. Right. You know, you're right. traveling the universe. It was like a dream. Mm-hmm. You know, and you, that kind of stuff's hard to recapture now. Because we've got stuff. I mean, look, they what was that movie, the game that just came out where you could explore all the all the worlds? They were all made on the fly. No oh, Man's uh, Sky. No Man's Sky. Right. People were killing that game. Mm-hmm. Now I've never played it. Okay, it looked pretty cool. But I mean, look at had the just the incredible size of it demands some respect. It would seem, but they, they got murdered, murdered. Mm-hmm. And I know they promised stuff they didn't deliver. I got it. But that's pro- I'm trying to think of something that would equate to the same feeling you got when you played Elite back in the day. You know, right. It just felt huge. Now, what does it feel that way now? You know, now you know you've seen other stuff, but it it was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And and the, and the opening sequence to that was amazing. Now, Elite Frontier is the second one, right? Right. Elite mm-hmm. Frontier. The opening sequence of Elite is just uh, astounding. I remember you showing people that, just like, look at this, and they were like, oh, you know. And again, does it hold up? Yeah, probably not. But I mean, it was pretty awesome back in the day. Does it? Is the intro better than the Blood Money intro? The thing about it is the intro is gameplay. Oh, where like Blood Money is awesome and the song the song is great. There's a whole lot more coming, but 
once you get to playing, I remember making fun of that game mm-hmm. because when I didn't have an Amiga at the time, and somebody showed it to me, I'm like, yeah, the, this looks awesome. And I'm like, look at the game. It's just a side shooter. You know, I was hoping you could go through the asteroid belt. Or I mean, in Frontier, you're pretty much playing what you see. And that's what that's what made it awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, thanks for all the questions, guys. Uh, we'll answer more next week. Uh, now we've come to the part of the show where uh, we're going to celebrate our Patreon subscribers. Is that what you're calling it this week? So um, these humiliate. Is that what you said? <laughs> these are our uh, our lovely Patreon supporters. If you would like to support the Amigos podcast and keep us rolling week after week, month after month, year after year, um, go on over to our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast, and uh, we'd, we'd love to have your support. I will be singing these names uh, to the tune of Hong Kong Fooey. Josh, Nan, David, McCrandall, Jason, Warns, Graham, Webb, K, Rob O'Hara, Paul, Harrington, Lloyd, Drew, Jonas, Rowe, Colgan, Barman, Tears, Ruther, Rip, Adam, Bradley, Chris, Wells, Will, Williams, Daniel, Bingston, Brands, Red, Red, Vintage, Chad, Halstead, Bryn, Dowdy. That was amazing. I Thank gotta you. give you credit on that. Thank you. It was hideous. <laughs> <laughs> but it was amazing. Um, so, thank you all for watching. Um, next week, what are we going to do next week, Aaron? Bushido. 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 This is a this is a suggestion from me, just because I've played so many of these horrible karate games. I was like, you know, I remember liking this. Let's see how it holds up. So we're gonna we're gonna put it to its paces. Plus, it's one of those games where you have different little areas we like those awesome yes little areas little areas <laughs> cool well um we will see you then we'll see you next week uh we are going to be running the uh the the youtube gaming um thing again next week we're going to start recording at uh we'll start recording before we'll start the pre-show uh in between 4 30 and 5 just depending on when aaron gets here and um and then Tune in at 5 o'clock. You are guaranteed to see us. We'll either still be doing a pre-show. <laughs> That'll or, bring him in. <laughs> or we'll be, doing the, um, we'll be doing the live show. So uh, whatever, whenever you've got time, if you want to watch us live, you're welcome to. If you want to watch us on demand, you can check out our YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out the webpage, too, AmigosPodcast.com. We've got tons of new content every single day. Lots of good stuff yeah, up there. We've got a whole team of contributors. Uh, we got a pretty big announcement concerning the site coming up pretty soon so stay Mm. tuned for that um but until next time adios